Hey guys, JoeBiz34 back again and uh, doing a little Star Wars extravaganza here. I had recently received a lot of new figures, so uh, that Star Wars themed, Star Wars related, so uh, since I don't really have time to do a lot of reviews one on one, uh, and you know, a little late to the game with some of these, I know some of these have been out a bit, I uh, decided to do sort of like another group video. So, Star Wars Mania, here we go, just like I did Batamania now, or, <laughs> or Batmania, now, now I'm doing Star Wars Mania. I uh, got a few here. So, got the Biker Scout, the Scout Trooper. Uh, the, the new version with the that they just came out, the Hot Toys just came out with that's the Return of the Jedi version that comes with the round speeder bike and then from that movie. And I'll go over that last in more detail as far as uh, going over the details with that. Really nice from what I see so far. IG-11 I have over here. Really solid figure. I'll go over uh, now for a few minutes here to go over stuff that he has. And uh, I have the robot from Rogue One that they re-released. Uh, they, they call it, I call it something different now. They call, if we go to the, the box here, right? So here's the box for it. And they have nice artwork on all these figures that I, I kind of decided to display here that comes like within the box. So here's IG-11, the, the artwork that comes within the box. There's a nice picture of the actual figure. And they're the actual figure, which is cool. It's not just like a, a movie shot, but it's actually, here's Luke and, and the, uh, the, the destroyed uh, Dark Trooper from The Mandalorian. The season two finale that comes with little baby Yoda, the child, or Grogu. And nice nice backdrop they give you there uh, in the box, which I'll explain in a little bit. And there's the uh, the box for the scout trooper. And here is the here is the droid from Well, it was Rogue One originally, and they released him. So if you see down here, we get low here, this is the KX Enforcer droid. Right, so this is basically the same droid, but in Rogue One he was what well, KS two O, um, but basically it's the same figure. It's just that this one is not specifically the droid from Rogue One, and like Hot Toys usually does is they don't often, which I appreciate. I think a lot of fans and collectors that there appreciate. They always try not to, if they're going to double dip. They always try to at least make it unique. So this one definitely shows more wear and tear, I believe, from the original figure. I never had the original figures, so I can't say for sure, but from pictures of what I've heard and from what I've seen on other people's reviews, this this you know has a lot more wear and tear. You can see that a lot of the, the scuffs and scratches and chips there on the paint work, uh, right? Especially on the legs and stuff. It's a really cool, intimidating figure. I mean, it comes with uh, it comes with a Mandalorian helmet. Right, so you know, because he, you know, he's obviously this is not, this is a, a an empire, you know, like a bad droid, not not good, except you know the rogue, the one in Rogue One obviously was reprogrammed to help. So getting into this one a little bit, since we're on him at this point, I'll show you this, and I'll show you, I'll go, I'll get back to IG Eleven. If you pop off the top of his head here, okay, there's a light here to turn on his. Uh, you put the batteries in right here. And a little switch here, very bright light as you can see. Okay, put this back on, put the top back on. Very hard to do this one handed, I didn't set up uh, something to hold my phone camera. So, but anyway, as you put it back on, you can see now you have the lights on his head, which is very nice. Okay, and you want to be careful with this guy. There's, there's a couple like little sharp edges, if you can see it right there. and. These things, if you handle it, you could break it. Uh, this one here was loose and was coming out, so I, I put it back in and I kind of, I just put a little dab of crazy glue so it stays in there. So just be careful and handle with care with that. They actually say that in the instructions too, but of course you don't read the instructions right away when you're taking the figure out of the box, so <laughs> didn't know. Anyway, it comes with two weapons. It comes with this, this longer rifle laser gun and it comes with a handheld gun here. I have him holding both at the moment. And nice display, like I said, with a large stand in the back here. So you can, you know, hold, it holds them steady. And it's a nice stand in this case for this type of stand. A lot of times they give this type of pole or this type of stand for figures like Superman or something that, you know, you could elevate it up or it's a little heavier so you, they could fly or be off the ground. But for him, he's just so tall. So this stand works out good for him. And it's got the grabber that fits right in on the back of him that is very inconspicuous. You can't even tell it's there. So that's nice. Okay, so it blends in and it supports him really well. 
All right, so right here we have uh, also Rogue One, squadron leader that is very nice. It's a stormtrooper, uh, but with the, uh, the shoulder pad there, the, the, the very famous orange shoulder pad that we've seen many times since uh, the original Star Wars. He comes with a rifle and also the standard stormtrooper gun as well. All right, and it comes with a base, which I'm gonna, the re there's a reason why I'm showing this before IG-11 too, which I'll get into. So there's a stand base. I don't have the crotch grabber right there, but it does come with a crotch grabber that you put in the back. But as you can see, he stands very well for the sake of posing and for doing this video. And a lot of nice details here. Uh, the the uh, the armor is very well done. Uh, from what I've seen from other people, they said that this is in the same vein as sort of the Return of the Jedi Stormtrooper they did, but there's some minor differences. Um, the the padding on the outfit underneath is thick, a lot thicker than other Stormtroopers I've had or seen, whether it's Hot Toys or other. It has a little canister on the back, and it is magnetized, so you just have to pop it on, and it, it just pops right on there and sticks. So it's because it's it's by magnets, which is very nice. The um, there's there's subtle dirt and weathering. It's it's white. It's pretty. It, it's almost a clean look, but it does have subtle weathering on it. If you get closer in, you could see there that there is scratches and some minor scuffs on it. And see there too. There's some weathering there. So very nice. Uh, it's a simple figure. Not much to say about it. But I, I love you know again if you're if you like to you know build army build or have a lot of the the stormtroopers you know it 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 comes in handy here. And I always, I have some older ones that have the, the pads from a New Hope version. So he might fit in with that or whatever. They might, you know, if they come up with more with the different shoulder pads, you know, maybe I'll build up a kind of more modern, uh, you know, up-to-date figures of that, of New Hope. I would love if they did the New Hope ones again, the Sand Troopers. That would be cool. So really nice there. Uh, getting back to IG-11. So the reason why I was jumping around here is the one thing, see, the one thing I just complimented Hot Toys for him is another reason why I'm going to ding it a little bit because I love this IG-11. There's definitely some uh, weight to it. There's some die cast pieces. And same thing with him. There's some die cast pieces here, it feels like, or at least heavy, like right here, the, the knee joints and stuff. So there's definitely some weight to it and it feels sturdy. It doesn't feel flimsy. Same thing with him. He's partially die cast, although not all of it. Uh, to be honest with you, it feels more non die cast than die cast. Also comes with the two weapons: the regular stormtrooper like rifle or gun, and then the longer rifle that he uses in uh, Mandalorian. And he's been seen in Mandalorian season one, and then he came back uh, in season three multiple times. Now they have Hot Toys has the new version where the child, uh, you know, Grogu can sit in his chest. I don't think I'm going to get that, but it, you know, it's cool if people you know like that that scene or that, you know, that, that type of figure of him. And he's a reoccurring character, I guess you could say at this point, right? And then at the end they show like he's kind of rebuilt and all that. Sorry if I've given spoilers for everybody out there. <laughs> but the one thing I'm going to ding him on, and I'm going to show you the light up features and stuff on this guy, the, the mobility on this and the articulation is great. I have the old IG-88 figure that Sideshow did a few years ago. Hot Toys has not done one yet. They've done this one, but not the one from Empire Strikes Back. And that one was, you know, at the time, it was, it was plasticky, very, uh, a very stiff figure. It, it did, you really couldn't do much to it. This guy is all over the place. I mean, you can, you can turn his torso around. You can, you can uh, and again, I don't have the stand going for him right now, the, the crotch grabber. He's standing fine on his own. But you can swivel him. You can swivel his head. You can, you can uh, up, you know, uh, display his arms straight up or at angled or, as you could see, in shooting positions. Uh, the legs can bend at the knees. They're they're almost you can almost bend them completely straight up or you know ninety degree angles. Really nice. I mean, overall, it's a really nice figure. There's the uh, the bandolier that you can put on him. That's another thing that is different from the IG eighty eight version to this. Now the other thing too is he does have LED features. But here's where again I'm going to ding Hot Toys a bit. Now if you look at the stand here that the uh, the squad leader stormtrooper came with here, right? The sand base uh, here. Now, if you look, it's got, you know, indentations, right, for the feet, all right? And then there's the uh, little one back there, which I, that's just an uh, indentation, I guess, in the sand. But, the, you know, this basically shows you where the feet go. And it fits, for the most part. And I've seen this type of base before. I mean, this base is pretty standard for Hot Toys Star Wars characters that were either from Tatooine or Jakku or anything that's like a sand environment. They give you that type of base. But the funny thing here is look at the feet on this guy. Okay, pretty much rectangular squares, right? 
Obviously not feet like the Stormtrooper has, but check this out. <laughs> it's the same exact base, but look, it says IG-11 on it. So it's not a, it's not a mistake. It, this base was not meant, but this base is the exact same base as this base. But if you look at the feet, there's no way the feet are going to line up here. I mean, he stands, and luckily he stands great because of the type of feet he's got. So it really doesn't matter. But if you look at this base, it's not made for this feet. So, you know, for these feet right here, it's just, you know, so it kind of, it's it kind of like, you know, there's times it's weird with Hot Toys. Hot Toys, is a, they have a split personality. You know, sometimes they're unique, and they make sure not, you know, if they're double dipping, they make sure to not reuse things, uh, you know, and I'll get into that with this too. This guy is very different from the other uh, Biker Scout Trooper figure that they came out with that's from The Mandalorian, and I'll get into that a little bit too. But it's just, it just amazes me that, you know, they go this far with all these details, but yet <laughs> they just throw in a base that they've used, you know, a million other times. So it's, I, I found that kind of funny. But anyway, the top of his head here is magnetized, so you could just kind of pop it right off. And then there's a switch in there. Okay, once you get the batteries in there, which, by the way, was not that hard to do, but I will say something. With this one, because this is magnetized, you want to make sure you seal this thing back up once you put the batteries in, okay? Because when you put this on it, the batteries just suck right up onto this magnet. And I didn't realize that because I put it back on quick, and I didn't realize that, that, was gonna ha that this was a magnet. So you want to make sure you seal this back up, okay? Then you put the top back on, and you have to kind of find the right way it goes back on. There's a certain way that it fits in and then it just kind of snaps into place with the magnet, okay? Yeah, see, that I, I missed the mark there, but as you can see, it's very hard to once again do it with one hand. But as you can see, once it's back on, I'll fix that in a minute, because again, I'm holding the camera on my other hand, but the light is the light up features on the head and it goes all the way around, which is cool. See? So very nice. Um, I do believe that the front of his head is indicated by these two, these two, uh, I guess, cannons, uh, whatever these are. <laughs> I don't remember, I don't think things shoot out of it, but these uh, these two rivets right here, when you see those two there, that's that's close to the front of his face, I believe, because he doesn't really have a face, right? So, and then you have two chest boxes that come. This one came in there by default, which kind of has a same look as the, the bandolier pattern. And then there's the second one that also has its own batteries that you put on. And I believe this is, you know, again, if I go back and watch the show, I believe this is what flashed when he was near something he had to destroy or kill. Because I think this would start flashing and alerting every time he saw uh, Grogu. Right? So hold on a second. Let me pause this. I'll be right back. Okay, so there we are. And as you can see, now that the chest plate is in place, you should just slide it right in very easily. You have the flashing light, the, the, the alert, because, you know, he's seen something he's supposed to kill or attack, right? Uh, he's actually a very, uh, in the in Mandalorian, they show that this is actually a very dangerous character. He's a very dangerous robot that will go and kill things. Now, as we all know, the beloved IG-88 that we've known since our childhood was a bounty hunter. But we didn't really know too much about his backstory until they started using him either, like, in the Expanded Universe or... Uh, the, uh, you know, the cartoons like Clone Wars and stuff where we kind of got a little more glimpse of, you know, who he was and what type of droid he was. So they really went and explored it here very nicely in Mandalorian and brought in IG-11. And, you know, we could see a lot more of what this robot is capable of doing. You know, just like him, you know, he's very, this one's very dangerous. He didn't come from the Empire. I don't believe he was, you know, uh, he, I mean, they used, the Empire used him but IG-88 and this one, IG-11, they're, they're specific models of this type of droid that they focus in on. And IG-88, there's a whole backstory I think you could read that, you know, he kind of split up, split, uh, split up from, from the group of these type of droids and ended up being his own thing, right? He, he became a bounty hunter. Just like the, this droid here, the K2SO model, uh, ended up, you know, joining uh, the good guys, basically, in Rogue One. So there's some, you know, it's, so it's kind of cool how Star Wars works that where they have like specific species and specific uh, droids or whatever, but then they have these spinoffs of these characters that just become individual. They've done it with Clone Wars where you have Rex and you have, you know, certain clones that broke off from the pack and become, you know, standout characters. And they do the same thing with the droids and stuff and these type of things, which is really cool. Um, so, you know, that's why that's, that's what's, that's expanding the universe as we would call it. So let's uh, let's move on here to the biker scout, the scout, uh, the speed bike trooper, 
which is right here. And I'm just gonna shut these lights off so I don't waste the batteries here. And I'll be right back to continue the review with this guy. Okay, so let's focus now on the speeder bike and the bike trooper, the biker, the, the scout trooper, biker scout trooper. This is a beautiful figure. I just also wanted to, to correct myself real quick. I've been such in a hurry to kind of show all these figures. The squad leader, the, the, the stormtrooper that had the, the orange padding on his, the, the orange shoulder pad, uh, actually, I believe is from Mandalorian season two, not Rogue One. I get confused with the two now because they've been releasing these figures so fast. And a lot of these type of stormtroopers or characters appeared in both movies. <laughs> so I did put an, uh, I will put a little notation, which when you see this video, you probably already seen that I corrected it in, in a, underneath in subtitle. That was actually from Mandalorian, I believe, not Rogue One. Although they may have appeared in Rogue One as well, as often as some of these have been seen in both. So just wanted to clarify that. So this this uh, speeder bike trooper here is really nice, and this is the Return of the Jedi. You can see I have all the everything that pretty much comes with him comes with the two guns, one that you can store here, his handheld pistol, and then the longer rifle, which I think when he's not on the speeder bike is a cooler weapon to pose him with. As you see, I have him here. Uh, really nice articulation on the head, you know, a lot of good range. They've gotten Hot Toys especially has gotten very good at doing these troopers with these type of like outfits underneath that still allow artic articulation. Like I pointed out with the the squadron leader, the uh, stormtrooper with the orange shoulder pad, as I like, like to specify <laughs> and make his title way longer, um, that the type of padding he's got underneath, although it's thicker, it for some reason it just seems that the articulation is better and more sturdy. And it, you know, the clothing doesn't ride up or wrinkle or rip or something like that. The older stormtroopers that other companies made in the past, whether it was Metacom years ago that were really, they still hold up by the way, those Metacom ones that you can build up and put the armor on the bodies or the sideshow ones, you know, they were fine and they were, they were great for what they were. Uh, but you know, sometimes those under outfits maybe get a little of a, a tear or something that would, uh, you know, kind of mess it up. So they've gotten a lot better now at, at doing this. So we have here, you know, with this, with this outfit underneath, it's, it's got a baggy look. It's perfect. It doesn't interfere with articulation. The weathering is really nice the boots and everything. And the nice thing about these boots here is that they have a lot of give because they're not actually full on boots. There's like soft, there's soft material here. So you can bend the foot. You can, you can do things with the foot as you can see here, see very easily because it's not a solid boot, which in some companies in the past have made, including even like Hasbro back in the day. And there's Velcro here that you can easily, uh, pull off the back here and then, you know, zip it back up, not zip it, but you know, Velcro it back up. So very nice for articulation and for ease of futzing, right? As you're posing, you can easily just like, you know, if you need to like kind of shrink it down or kind of pull it, pull it up to straighten up, whatever you need to do. So very nice. Typical base, once again, with a forest environment, it says here, scout trooper, uh, knee pads here that are upside down. If you go, if you compare it to the Mandalorian version, that's the other big difference uh, with this version versus the the one that came with the gray and white speeder bike from Mandalorian. And it's pretty much the same figure, but this one actually is redone a bit. Now my Mandalorian version is packed up, so I can't do a side by side, which I'd love to do. And I've seen others do the side by side. And when you do that, you really can see that Hot Toys actually did not double dip. This is the Return of the Jedi version. His armor up here is very different from the armor that you see, like his chest armor on the other version. Uh, and then you can see that there is subtle, very good wear and tear and subtle weathering on it, but still looks clean from a distance. So it's kind of got the best of both worlds. And the 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 details of the belts, the belt here and, and these, these pouches hanging off, and you can't see it right now the way I got them posed. Let me see if I can open it up here. The pouches on his on here and the uh, the waist area and the abdominal area is d definitely different than the the one that came with the Mandalorian uh, biker scout. So there is a difference. So if you're a completionist and you want both versions, there is a reason to have two that's justified. It's not just, oh, I have the same figure twice. And of course, the knee pads that are different, and these are the original knee pads, the way they were worn in Return of the Jedi, that were facing this way. And I guess, they, like I said, there's a running joke that they... They accidentally, when the characters put put them on, or the, I guess the actors, I should say, put them on in Mandalorian, that they actually flipped them and had them upside down. Uh, we don't know if it was a studio mistake that they just went with, or if it was planned that way to just be different than the original movie, which can also be possible because sometimes they do that. 
And of course, they always have merchandising in their mind. They're like, how do we make a new figure out of this that looks different? I know, we'll, we'll do knee pads that look different, that look upside down. Who knows? But Hot Toys went on that. So when they did the Mandalorian version, the knee pads were the other way. And they were different from this. This is not the same. This is not just the same knee pad flipped upside down. Or f I should say flipped right side up. There is a difference with this. So it's very nice. And... It's very detailed and it's very Return of the Jedi, you know. So it's 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 a win win. I love it. I, I love this figure. I even love the Mandalorian version. The, the Mandalorian version also looks less white than this. A little more of a yellowish, you know, more weathering, uh, and you know, more wear and tear. Obviously, because it's supposed to be like years later, right? And they're in the sand or whatever out there, getting it uh, dirty and all that. The boots are more dirty and yellowish. I think on the Mandalorian version, and and I am going a little bit on memory here, but there is differences. So again. Definitely kudos, you know, so like I said, Hot Toys will do something like this, but then they go ahead and they give you a regular stand with regular feet for IG-11, which makes no sense to me. Um, the back piece here does slide on, and I'm getting spoiled because they're doing magnetic systems now. So I'm, I was just trying to see if it would pop on there with a magnet, then realized, okay, no. Then I actually read the manual, which most guys are guilty of not doing, <laughs> and realized that, you know, you have to slide it on the belt. So I did slide it on the belt, and then once it gets in there, it stays pretty snug, and there it is. Okay? Really beautiful. Um, now let me get into the, the speeder bike. I'll be right back. We'll get more into the speeder bike, and then I'm going to attempt to pause the video again and put him sitting on there, and we'll see if I could do that with ease. <laughs> All right, so I think I did as, as good of a job as I could do for now getting him on here. Obviously, there'd be more futzing that's needed. It's, it is a little challenging. It's not so easy to get his feet to line up with the brakes, although they do give you magnetic pieces here that you hook in on the bottom so it catches the bottom of the foot. Um, I don't have it completely lined up yet, and I don't really feel like going nuts posing this right now perfectly, you know, just to kind of rip it apart if I, you know, because I'm not keeping it here, obviously. So I kind of got them on there enough that you get the point. <laughs> um, it's, like I said, you need some time. But once you get it right, you get it right. And if it's not 100% perfect, that's okay. Because, like, as you can see right now, the illusion is that he's on. So, I mean, his hand keeps popping off here, the steering wheel and stuff, but I got this one on there. It's fine. For the sake of the video, to give you the kind of an idea, it does look really badass. It looks really nice especially from that angle there, right? He looks like he's looking at the other guys in the picture. <laughs> so I'm going to take a picture of that as I'm filming because that's a cool pose. Anyway, so to get into the speeder bike itself, I mean, simply enough, it's very cool. It's very similar. If you have the Sideshow one, uh, I know there's been, there were some complaints with this. I mean, as far as the way the biker scout, the speeder bike feels, it feels the same. It feels a little plasticky. It doesn't feel much more sturdy or less sturdy than, I guess, other ones. But it is nicely weathered. You could see, you know, if you see here the texture on it, with the scuffs and the the details of the weathering, it's it's nice. It's the right color. It's accurate, especially in the front there. There's major scuffing and scratches and weathering going on there. And, you know, throughout the bike, it's really nice. It's weathered nice. There's some darker stains. And, you know, you can see details in there. Really nice. Details. There's the gun underneath that does, that does move and turn. They do specify that in the instructions as well. And it's on a stand. And what I like, they, you know, the stand is simplistic enough. It's just a, a typical base stand that you get with a figure, but it's a forest and rock environment. They have these leaves you can put in there, and then you can kind of bend these. See, if you see here, the, the stand that is bendable, so you can kind of tilt it, or you can kind of point it up, you know, and you can kind of, you know, you can kind of get some more dramatic poses here, see? So that's really cool the way they did that. I'm gonna back out here for a second so you can kind of see. So you can kind of angle him or make, or tip him, make him like he's angled. Like that. It's really cool. So I'm very happy with this. I never really, like I said, put the Mandalorian one together. So it's the same idea, I'm sure. And it's really, and like I said, he comes with a bunch of other hands, which is nice. He comes with, you know, hands that like are probably more appropriate to hold the bike. Like this is probably the one he probably should be, you know, I'm doing this quick, but this is probably one that he should be using to hold the handlebars a little better, like these two here, which I didn't really you know, put much too much thought into right now for the sake of the video. And then you have closed fist ones and so on. Really nice. And then you have the trigger holding one. Okay, so there's the one that was on the rifle that you can, you know, have him hold the gun and, and put the finger in there to hold the trigger for the gun. And it's, uh, you know, really well. And then you have, you know, what he has on him right now, which, you know, is, you know, could technically be more relaxed holding or other type of hands that can actually hold the guns, which is nice. So very nice details here, uh, very well done. I really like the base. It's simple, it's not hard to install, but yet it gives you so much range what you could do. See, now he's tilting that way, you see, which is really cool. I'm gonna take another 
shot of that. That's really nice. Because it looks like, like I said, it looks like he's number three in line there. One, two, boom, three. <laughs> so, again, very, very cool. If you're a fan of the Return of the Jedi version especially, this is a no-brainer. Go out and get it. And he's a cool figure on its own if you just want him. But I would recommend getting the speeder bike if you don't already have one or the older one. And if you have the Mandalorian one and you're, you don't mind that it's not the Return of the Jedi color scheme or anything like that, then you might be fine with that one and not really care about getting this one. But if you're an enthusiast like me of, or nostalgic of the old films, this was a must-have for me. If I had it, like, you know, gun to the head, if I had to give up one, I would give up the Mandalorian one versus this one. The Mandalorian one is basically the same speeder bike. It's got a different, uh, it's, it's different in the back, though. I think it had, like, a basket or something instead of the blanket, if I remember. Um, the blanket, I feel like, could be a little more weathered. It's nice. It's not that hard to install. You know, it looks, it looks, it's real material. It's a real bag you could take on and off with straps. So it is good in that sense. It's not plastic like the old hatchback. But if you look at the picture there, it looks a little more, you know, it looks like it could have used a little bit more weathering or a little bit more to kind of make it, give it that used look, you know, but it's pretty close. I mean, if you look at the picture and you look there, I just feel like it should be a little more like squishy and weathery. I don't know, there should be some more dirt on it or something, a little, little lighter, maybe a little lighter beige color to get to get more screen accurate there and get what you're seeing there. But other than that, it's really nice, really just a little nitpick. And um, really, really cool. You know, believe it or not, this didn't give me a whole lot of trouble to, to set up. But what one thing that really annoyed me a bit that you'll have to, let me just kind of pick them, pick them up a little bit here to get them off, uh, is these leaves. Uh, <laughs> this was actually kind of weird because I think the little ones and the big ones go into certain areas. And the way the instructions show it, it says it kind of points to here like, okay, these are the small leaves and these are the big leaves. But it does, it's, I don't think it's really that cut and dry. And you probably can mix and match them any way you want. It's not really a big deal. It's just for the effect of the uh, the base. But it, it, did agit it did irritate me a little bit. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. Okay, guys, I'm back to highlight the last figure of this video to conclude Star Wars Mania. <laughs> uh, this is definitely the highlight, I think, of the, the figures that I have reviewed here today. Um, obviously, the Biker Scout's a big deal with the speeder bike and all that, and that's a great set. This, however, definitely is worthy of some attention. This is the DX uh, set, which is always special, right? The DX set, they always give you a little more to it, a little more care. The boxes are a little more fancier with the foam, uh, with the double trays you know, underneath, so that holds the stand. Uh, what you're seeing here is Luke from uh, what you would think is Return of the Jedi, right? But no, it's it's got he's got the black cape. Uh, he's rocking the black cape there instead of the uh, the brown, and uh, or cloak or whatever you want to call it. And this is from Mandalorian, uh, specifically season two when he showed up at the the end for the finale. And I would think at this point I'm not spoiling anything by now. <laughs> um, and what's nice about this set, uh, you know, unlike other sets, it does not come with multiple head sculpts. Uh, which is, you know, sometimes a norm for a DX set, but really it doesn't need one. Uh, this is, this says it all. He, you know, he really, he had a brief scene where you saw him. And if you want to talk about having two looks, I mean, if you put the hood over his head, that's the second look, because that's pretty much how he appeared until he revealed himself. And I remember being shocked when he did put the hood down, because that moment we all knew it was Luke by the time he got in, and stopped all the dark troopers, you know, that you see right there, the damaged one that comes with this set, which is also a nice touch, which I'll get into. Um, you know, nobody really knew for sure what was going to happen when that hoodie came down. You know, was it going to be Mark Hamill? Was it going to be somebody standing in? Some people thought it was going to be the dude from Winter Soldier, because there's been rumors for months that they were going to utilize him. But uh, no, it's it was Mark Hamill, de-aged by some Disney digital magic. And uh, that's pretty much what he looked like. And, you know, the funny thing is, is that they did a better job with this head sculpt. See if I can zoom in there real quick. They did a better job with this head sculpt than when uh, they actually made the Return of the Jedi Luke. So as you can see there, getting in closer, it's a nice improvement. They did a better job with the hair. And, you know, it does resemble Mark Hamill. And, it, you know, you can most certainly use this for you know, emulating that scene from Mandalorian, Mandalorian, or you can use this as your Luke stand, your Return of the Jedi Luke, if you want, you know, and it's, it's really, it's really special. Uh, they, they did a great job here. I saw some people online that they would actually take the, the hair off here because this does have, uh, 
uh, eye, you know, eye moving, eyeball rolling system. Again, they're doing the single eye thing, which I still don't get. I don't understand why they're doing the one eye at a time thing. I like the purrs. I like the lever that controls both. There's no purpose to having one eye move separate from the other eye unless you want to make them cockeyed or cross-eyed or do something funny. You know what I mean? I, so I still don't understand that and don't like it. Uh, I really would feel more comfortable messing with the eyes if they had the one lever that, that moves both eyes simultaneously so they stay in sync. So, you know, with this being a DX, they do have the eye that can move, you know, the eyes that can move, but they are independent from each other like they've been doing with some other things lately, which doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the goodies and everything else that comes with. So as you can see behind Luke, uh, there's a backdrop, a cardboard uh, scenery here that comes that uh, emulates the hallway that he came in. It's not in scale if he's standing right in front of it. I guess it's meant to be more, if you look at it there, the doorway. I guess if you, if you were to pose Luke closer up in the display, it would look more to scale like it's in the distance, right? But like if you stand him right in front of it, it's not really um, to scale. It doesn't really match. So, but it's a nice, it's a nice cool touch. I'm gonna bring Luke up again to the camera so you can kind of get a better look at him. And like I said, like I started to say before, I've seen people swap the hair out because you could take the hair off because of getting to the purrs system and all that, or single eye rolling system, whatever you want to call these. And I've seen somebody actually swap the hair off of the Return of the Jedi Luke and pop it, pop this head sculpt on the Return of the Jedi Luke with that cloak. And with this head sculpt, but with the hair from the other figure, and you know, it's spot on. So, you know, again, although I do think this looks good enough that you could just leave this be and still be a Return of the Jedi Luke, you could just change the cloak out to a brown one and be done. But again, you have a lot of options there. So I have him in a relaxed pose at the moment with the cape draping down. You can obviously take the, the cape off if you want to just have him with his regular outfit on. And I have the swapped arm piece on that comes with it that comes with the light-up lightsaber. So you can put the lightsaber stick in there and then be able to ignite it so it, so it glows in green. He stands very well on his own. Not, not a lot of uh, effort there. Although in the set, he does come with an individual stand if you want to stand him on his own, okay? He comes with a lightsaber hilt if you just want to have one hanging off his belt or pose it separately that doesn't uh, require the blade or you can put the blade in this is the blade right here that goes into either or. So you could, put the, you could put the blade in this one if you just want to use it without any sort of like light up effects or have the hilt on its own. Or you can, you can have the hilt on its own that's in the hand that lights up, in the arm that lights up, or put this in for the light up feature. And I'll show you that in a little bit later how that looks, which is very nicely done, by the way. They also come with an additional... You know, the, what they've been doing lately, the infamous swinging effect lightsaber. So it looks like he's in action. So that's, that's pretty cool. I haven't tried that one out yet, but I'll display that in a little bit to, so you guys can see how that works. Okay. Um, they come with a little Baby Yoda once again, which he's been, he's been making his rounds with figures lately from Mandalorian and so on. Here's Grogu, the child or Baby Yoda, however you want to name him or remember him. Look at the little feet down there. It's pretty cool. It is to scale. And they actually do have uh, swap out arms for him, which is funny. I, I just noticed that they have these little swap out hands and arms that you can change. So it looks like he's like using the force. Like, eh. So you can swap it out in him, which is kind of a, a cool touch. Um, of course, they have the additional hands and, and arms. Like they have the glove. They have additional gloved arms and stuff. Uh, the black, the infamous black glove, closed fist, open fist. And then they have the additional hands where like this one, he's using the force, you know, like... And we're force choking, or then the action one, the action hand, like, <laughs> so this is a, an exclusive, so this also came, this is like the, the ultimate deluxe version, whatever it was, it was the, they had like a, a collector's edition of deluxe, and then like an ultimate, this is the ultimate that came with, you know, this guy here, plus this little added piece, this little hologram ship here, you know, that can, can you know, be held in the hand to look like, you know, when somebody's got it in their hand, they got the device in their hand, they can kind of look to see something holographic, so they, it comes with that, which is very nice. And the box and everything else is a really nice touch. Now this guy here is pretty cool. Now what I have right now is I have the back of him off for easy access. So this comes with a stand that so you can display him. So it's, I guess it's supposed to be like he's in the air because Luke did a number on this guy. If you remember watching Mandalorian, crushes him, damages him, and then kind of, you know, uses the force to kind of 
you know, in the air. So I, this, this, this back piece here would normally go here to close it up, which I will do, but, the, but this is where you put the batteries in and this is where you turn him on and off as far as the, uh, the lights. So there is a switch here. I believe it's right there. Now there's two modes here. So you can have it light up so it just kind of stays steady, okay? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, make it a little darker here for the moment so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, let, me shut the, let's, let me shut the light off here. All right, so you can kind of see those light up effects a little better, okay? And then you can kind of get an idea, all right? Which is really cool. Or the second effect, the second mode, if you press it a second time, it actually starts to flicker, which I think is way cooler. Okay, look at that. So that actually like looks like he's damaged and, you know, kind of flickering here, flickering and damaged. So I actually like this better. I think that's actually a cooler effect. And you can mess with the head kind of, oh, well, as you can see, the head does come off <laughs> and there's the light bulb underneath, but you know, you gotta be careful as you just saw what happened with mine, but you can, you can, you can uh, pose the head. So you can put the head down and you can kind of have it more up, kind of give that effect like he's getting lifted in the air with a force or crushed or what have you. Now, the other cool thing about this figure, I do have the normal Dark Trooper as well. And, you know, as you've seen with other people's reviews or what it says in the instructions, you can actually take this. This is compatible to take this half and put it on your figure. So he has the legs and everything. So there's a little like mechanism that you can use to release the, the torso and the head off of the normal Dark Trooper figure. And you can actually pop this on if you want to have, you know, him as a full figure, a full body figure from head to toe. Really cool. I don't think it's necessary. I kind of like this, um, even though, you know, it does look like he's just on a pole. I mean, it, you know, unless there's a way to maybe display him where I can kind of look like, make him hover or make it elevate, look like he's in the air, you know, that kind of thing. So that would be kind of cool. But for right now, that's the way, that's the options you have with this guy. And let me just press it another time, which should just turn it off completely. I don't want to make the head go nut flying again. There we go. All right. So put the head back on securely. All right. So again, once you're settled, you could put this back piece on him. But for the sake of doing the review, I kept the back panel off so I can have ease of access to kind of turn it on and off. All right? So that's basically the set right there. Um, the backdrop here. Now, so this backdrop, once again, is really nice. It's a little cardboard, boardy and cheap. It's not like, you know, the end all. It's, some, it's a throw-in. They have these little weird, like, inserts that you have to put in to kind of give it that 3D effect so it kind of stands out. But what I also notice here is that there is sort of like warping that's happening with this cardboard. I don't know if it's because of the temperature in the house or what have you, but it's not the sturdiest thing. So it's a nice little add-on. It's a nice touch. But again, it's not really mandatory. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like a nice added touch like that you can have if you want to put it in a display case or something. But again, not needed. But it is kind of cool. I mean, you know, it works. And if you put them in front of it, um, especially with some like, you know, mood light there, like something like that, it does kind of give the appearance like, you know, he's, you know, he's in the hallway of the ship. So it's pretty nice there. So I'm going to, I'm going to take, so let's do this here. Let's turn this light off again. All right. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to show you a little more of this. So this is what it would kind of look like with the hood on. Okay. So you can kind of go that way. Okay. And you could futz with it. You know, sometimes it kind of looks a little, uh, too pointy or too Harry Potterish, <laughs> but you can have it where like the head's kind of showing. You can put it down, see so like kind of the way it was when he's in the the show and he shows up and you didn't really quite see his face or know for sure who it was. It's very cool. You can get some dramatic poses and really cool stuff going on here. Now in here somewhere is the uh, the switch on his arm that you can get to. Now you can see there. There's the green light for the the lightsaber. So now if you take the lightsaber tube and put it in, and I do think they've made improvements with this compared to the past. These lightsabers that come with the figures now with the lights definitely look more effective and brighter than they used to be. You can't really tell with the lighting here at the moment. Let me see if I can make it even darker. I'm shutting off the room of the light next door. It literally does look cool at night. Um, you know, I did some cool photographs and stuff that uh, looked really cool, but it works. It's really nice and it does do the job. I mean, it's illuminated pretty nice. I remember like in the older days, even like when other companies did it, you know, in the past, Sideshow, Medicom, Hasbro, whatever, they would have the light that would kind of just start to fade out right from here on, right? So it didn't look complete. Although this still looks more brighter at the bottom, it's definitely like the ones they've been doing lately with these arms that you can kind of connect. I mean, they've done it with a lot of these Star Wars figures now. The, the light up effect is definitely better. And the darker it is, the better it is. It does stand out, okay? And it's got that nice tip there that kind of shines. So, you know, you can get some cool poses here. So if we do the other one, 
which I'm doing now off camera. Pop that in here, and I, ne I haven't actually done this yet, and do like an action pose here. Like he's swinging it, see? So, so it's, it, it, the light up effect is not quite as good on it because it's kind of more, um, it's a fatter piece, so there's more room for the light to kind of spread. So it's not quite as, as effective, but if you do some cool posing here, you can, you can make that work, okay? And you can kind of get that going where it looks like he's swinging it. Um, so it's really, really cool though. I mean, in a pinch, you know, if you got an action pose going on, you know, something where he's like, kind of like, rah, you know, <laughs> oops, it fell out, hold on. So let's say we pose him differently here, right? I'll, I'll straighten out the camera so you can kind of get a better view. So like he's attacking the guy here, right? And let's see, let's switch out his arm here, switch out his hand, put in like his action hand here, right? So like he's attacking, we're using the force on this robot, okay? Okay. So let's say he's like that, and I'm just doing this quick just as an example. Put this in. Okay, so you kind of have like a swinging effect here, right? So. You can kind of set it up so it looks like, you know, and you can make it even more dramatic than that. I'm just doing this quick just to show you guys, but, you know, it does kind of give the illusion, especially if it was darker in here right now, but it gives the illusion like he's swinging it, right? And it's, and it's doing that, like, kind of like, you know, effect of, like, seeing the light kind of swoosh through the air, right? So it's kind of it's kind of cool. Um, but I, I, I would prefer, honestly, the regular lightsaber. I think the regular blade... If you were to swap this out again and put the regular one in here, I definitely think this is, I think this works a little better. I, you know, I just, it's more, it's more even, the light is better, and it just looks, to me, it looks a little more realistic than the swinging one. But again, if you find that right pose, you find a right, that right, you know, moment, um, you know, you can, you can make it work where it does look like he's swinging it, and that's kind of like the, uh, you know, the, the light up effects of the lightsaber kind of like, you know, fluttering, you know, like, kind of, I don't know the word for it, but you know what I mean? Like, kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, you see the, the, the residuals of, of the light kind of moving, you know, quick. So there you go. And there, there's the, uh, the battle droid or the, sorry, the dark trooper going, right? And there, there's little baby Yoda looking for cover. <laughs> Grogu's like, help me. <laughs> um, really cool set. I really have to say really cool set overall. This Luke by far is the best Luke Skywalker. I think Hot Toys has done to date. Which is kind of funny, it's kind of ironic that it's the best one, but yet, you know, basically based on a scene that only lasted five minutes with a digitally recreated Mark Hamill, which is kind of, which is kind of funny. It's like, it's not even, you know, <laughs> from the original trilogy, but yet, like I said, it could still work for a Return of the Jedi Luke either way. So really cool, really awesome. I'm very happy with the set. I'm glad I ended up getting it. I wasn't really originally going to get it. But after I'd seen like other people's reviews and kind of had an opportunity to get get a little sale on this guy or some money off, you know, reward points, coupons, all that good stuff from Sideshow, I went and grabbed it. And, you know, I have the Dark Trooper. So once I saw that, once I saw that, you know, you could, you know, this was kind of compatible with that, it was a no brainer. So really cool. Um, you know, what can I say? I, I mean, I really can't say anything more for, about it other than the fact that it's really, um, a really a nice set and if you're a fan of the Mandalorian or you know Luke specifically this is a must-have you know this really is it's a really nice set um, again I'm a little disappointed with the eyes I don't like the fact that you know they're separate because I don't want to accidentally make them cockeyed because I can't see it right <laughs> you know because I, I need glasses myself at this point and I don't really want to mess with the eyes too much but you can mess with the eyes and go left and right and all that stuff it's typically as DX figures can and, um, you know, obviously you can get some really creative, cool stuff here. I mean, if you can see what they did with the boxes here, this is the inner, this is the inner box, which is really nice. I don't know if you can make it out there. There's Luke kind of like right there with his fist up there as he's coming through. And there's kind of the, uh, the dark trooper that this is, this figure is emulating. And then like right here again, you see him. So this would be a cool pose too, to kind of have the figure leaning back, right? And ha maybe then you use the you know, the swinging lightsaber blade to kind of get that effect going there. So that would be really cool. But in any case, the options are there, guys. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Happy collecting. Till next time, Jobus34. Peace out.